Hey, Coach, go ahead and make an opening statement, then we'll open for questions. Well, um, you know, I'm disappointed for our guys because, um, you know, like I told them after the game, I'm not disappointed in uh, the result. I'm disappointed for them because I think that um, the attitude and the work ethic and, um, you know, the togetherness has been as good as it's ever been here. And uh, the workload going into Iowa was exactly the same coming from Iowa. And um, every single game in this league requires you not only to play, you know, hard and tough and all that stuff, smart, but you have to play well, too. I mean, you have to play well to be in these games. I mean, Rutgers is a good team. I mean, they've had a great season. I know they struggled here coming in, but they battled a lot of injuries. And they're a bona fide big-time team, and um, just like Iowa was. And uh, we were able to be successful um, and crack you know, the Iowa game with our defense. And um, today, Rutgers did a really good job of dribble penetration. Uh, we had a hard time keeping them off the bounce, in, in particular on the perimeter. <clears throat> and um, offensively, to start the second half, the game really changed with the five turnovers in the first four or five minutes. And we had three turnovers at halftime. We finished with 12. So we ended up having nine turnovers in the second half, which to me was the big difference in the game. Um, we could have made more layups. Um, we didn't finish around the basket very well, uh, you know, but finishing the game with 12 turnovers after having three at the half, big, big difference um, in the complexion of the game. And then just for 40 minutes, really defensively, we had a hard time guarding the ball. And, uh, but it's one of, one of uh, 20. And uh, just like the Iowa game was, like I told them after the Iowa game, you know, everyone's going to talk about how great it is, but bottom line is Rutgers is just as good and the next one's going to be just as good, and they all count the same. Um, I just want our guys to believe um, in how much you know, room we continue to have to grow. You, know, you can see it in our bench. You can see it in our young guys coming in. Uh, they're playing better. Jerome's playing better. Anthony, Christian, Jordan uh, playing better. And um, you know, so we're getting, we're getting some more contributions. We just need to get a little bit more consistency. Alex. You guys were 35 percent, I think, today on twos. Was that a product of them maybe forcing you into some some tough long twos, or you guys just really not not executing in terms of getting the, the right shots at certain times? Yeah, the two point percentage was um, you know was uh, really dictated by how they played. Um, I thought they dropped back with their size, especially at the center position, and kept him in between the rim and, and the players. Kind of made it like a two on two game. You know, they, you, you're able to get down there, but you're not able to get some clean ones. And uh, we missed some good ones. You know, I think Trace probably left four or five uh, shot attempts, you know, that you would take over again. I don't think we got him the ball enough tonight. I don't think he did a good job of being really physical around the basket. Got to watch the film. Uh, but, you know, Trace didn't have his best offensive performance just in and around the rim. And us being able to get him the ball. Um, and our guards didn't finish. You know, the ones that they did have good looks, they didn't finish. So two-point field goal percentage defense, to me, um, that, was a, that was a byproduct of how Rutgers chose to play. I mean, we did go 10 for 16 from three. And, you know, everyone says we you know, can't shoot. We ended up going 10 for 16 from three. And uh, if we make 10 threes in a game, that's usually pretty good. So the telling sign to me was we either really turned it over or we didn't guard. And uh, second half, we did turn it over. And uh, we had a hard time guarding them all game. Mike Schumann. Yeah, Coach, I know guarding the ball was a point of emphasis coming in on against these guys. Is, did they throw anything at you that surprised you? No, no. Uh, coming into the game, talking about what we needed to do in the game and how we worked um, into the game, there wasn't any surprises. Um, you know, I thought them changing their lineup, uh, you know, put Baker in much more of a, a primary role. Um, Young has been way more primary role with the ball in his hands. And I thought Baker had a really good day. Um, McConnell played a lot more today. Okay, he played a lot more today. But, um, you know, in general, I thought they got a lot of contributions by the players that, um, you know, have been playing for them. And uh, there wasn't a whole lot of secrets. I mean, they did what they did. And uh, we had a very, like I said, a difficult time just keeping the ball in front. Greg. Uh, you, you sort of referenced 
Kirk said about Trace, leaving some things out there. Um, he got his first two shots of the game blocked and, and had a turnover. Do you, do you think he was sort of take? Was he? Was he into it? Was he taken out of it a little bit by that? I'm not real sure. I will say this: that I think that Miles uh, Johnson is one of the best interior defenders in the country. I've been saying that since he was a young guy. He has unbelievable instincts in stealing the ball as a big guy around the shoulders of the post guys, elbow catches, deflected passes. He has a quick hands and unbelievable length. But the thing that he has a, d a great job of doing is he can stay between you and the basket with his size, uh, but he also has unbelievable timing and he blocks shots. So I think early in the game it takes some getting used to uh, playing against a guy like him because it's not easy. Um, but as the game wore on, um, you could tell he impacted the game with his, with his defensive uh, presence. Uh, Trace didn't get as many clean ones. Uh, we couldn't get it to him as much. And as a byproduct of their team, you know, in general, they're, they're defensively, they're always known for their stickiness. But he definitely impacts the game on a defensive uh, front. And um, obviously, we'll play him later in the year. But we had to do a better job of, of getting him established like we normally do in every game. But this wasn't one of his best offensive performances. And you got to give Rutgers some credit about for that. Jeff. Hey, Coach, what, what do you feel the issues are with uh, losses often following wins over ranked teams over the past few years? Is there any pattern there, anything you can point to on that? No. Tom? Archie, the, uh, the the struggles with with Garden on, on the perimeter and that is, what can you do to change that, or is it just more just more of an effort thing? It was an effort. I mean, you know, I think part of it was we we had some breakdowns today, just in terms of communication, and you know, every team is different too. You know, it's not like every team runs the same plays and you just guard the ball. I mean, Rutgers is a driving team. They have, they have terrific offensive one on one players. That's how they play. Ron Harper's at the four. Tough matchup for anybody. Between Baker, Young, uh, McConnell, uh, Mathis, I mean, those guys are all hard attacking, driving guys. And, um, you know, we got whipped straight lines. Um, and we also had some real breakdowns in communication uh, just on execution of switches or execution of a uh, certain type of a coverage. And um, I thought we were bad in execution of, a, of the system. You know, that's been a part of our problem. We were much better against Iowa in being able to execute uh, we weren't as good today, you know, in being able to communicate and talk and uh, keep the ball in front. But that, that you know, Rutgers is a good, good driving team. And I thought that our defense would be tighter. Um, it wasn't. Uh, but they got us in some rotations, too, that shouldn't have happened. And we didn't need to be in as many rotations as that. Last question, Zach. Archie, sorry to kind of ask, I guess, a similar question to last week, but you're throwing another curveball here with the schedule. What's going on up at Michigan? I mean, just I know you guys had avoided a lot of that up until last week. How do you start to maybe handle a little bit of the uncertainty going forward? Do you think it's something where the league may juggle some things schedule-wise, or is it something where maybe you are looking at this as more of an extended layoff period? You know, I don't know. Um, it's, it seems to me that you know, you know, our league in general is starting to get hit a little bit with some new stuff, and um, it's not all bad. You don't have to jam 132 games in just to get them in. You know, uh, I think the players in general have been going strong here for a long time. And if there are some layoffs, maybe the layoffs are, are beneficial. It's hard to go like they've been going. But um, I think there's probably all options are on the table. You know, certain teams are now being impacted that have availability. Can they reschedule a game and flip it around? You know, maybe that's something they can do. Um, if they can't and you take a longer pause, that's not all bad either. You just you kind of roll with the punches at this point. Um, like we did a week ago, and whatever happens, happens. But, you know, you have to be ready to go when, when, the, uh, when it gets turned around. So if, if the next one is Illinois at home, that's the one that we got to lock in on. If they change the schedule and say, hey, would you like to, you know, be able to flip some things around? You know, would you like to play? Yeah, I think all our guys would, would love to play rather than have, you know, nine or ten off uh, or eight or nine days off. But I think the big thing is let's just make sure that we're doing what's best for the guys. Um, and um, you know, hopefully the, the Michigan situation isn't isn't crazy serious, and um, you know everybody you know can kind of 
get back at it when they can get back at it. But uh, there's going to be adjustments like this. This will go all the way through, you know, whenever the NCAA tournament ends. Uh, we're going to be dealing with a lot of this. Thank you, Coach.